I'm here at SeaWorld Orlando today, and we're gonna see if we can get on Icebreaker. I've heard they're doing pass holder previews and hoping that they're allowing the pass holder previews right now. A little stupid to most people, but I always appreciate a nice pathway interaction with a coaster. It's nice when they let you feel this close to it. Alright, so I'm officially in the queue. They are allowing gold and platinum members to ride today until 4 o'clock. As many rides as you want to ride. And uh, no wait. So that's cool. Mildly themed as SeaWorld usually does. And it's literally a walk-on. That's freaking cool. Something interesting, it appears they're going to do quick queue as soon as this ride opens. Which is pretty interesting. They also have some more stuff new to the area. It's been here for a little while, but we're gonna go check that out as well. I've got maybe two more rides on this. Open till four o'clock, it's about 3.50 right now. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. Some quick notes about this. This is a shuttle coaster, but with two trains because you pull up here and then it actually pulls you Welcome to back. the side, which is pretty cool. On your comfort collar. Lift the also, the launches are quite a bit stronger than they look. Thank you for riding I'll tell you more about the ride and enjoy the later rest on. Of your day here at SeaWorld. Also, the comfort collars are here. I guess since it's more of a family style coaster, they're doing the comfort collars, even though we all know they're useless and a nuisance, frankly. But it doesn't ruin the ride. I got on the last train, so I guess I'm not gonna get any more video from an empty car running, but it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot more fun than I expected, I will say. Especially when you come back the second time, this bump is really intense. Um, you, you, uh, you fly out of your seat pretty hard and you do it hurts your back a little bit if you're not braced. You got to fully brace yourself right there. Um, I would put this, I would say this is a nice starter launch coaster. This is kind of an in between coaster between a family coaster and a thrill coaster. I would call it, it's, it's a really good filler coaster basically, which this park needed. They need a filler coaster, and thank God they didn't go with an SS free spin or something stupid like that. They went with a completely unique coaster. It's the first time they've had an Intamin coaster in the park. Everything else is B&M's. So that's cool, except for Atlantis. And it's also their first launch coaster, which is, which is pretty neat. And uh, it's got a nice little partial theme to it. It's got its own original soundtrack like they usually do at SeaWorld. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, you definitely get some really good ejector moments in that. I do think it's a coaster that just about anybody can ride. Um, I'm not sure what the height limit is. Oh, 48 inches is the height limit. So it's good for even smaller kids. And I'd say it would actually be a f good first adult coaster. It's tall, but it's not too tall. Uh, it does have a lot of air time, but it's brief ejector unless you sit in the back row. And then when you get on top of that spike, it is a solid three seconds or so of free fall. And I was wrong, right now, they're not doing gold pass members. Right now, just the platinum pass. And then they're opening up to more and more people later on in February, you got starting. Okay, so yes, right now, platinum and gold, and then starting the seventh silver pass can go. And then the 14th, 15th, bronze members and fun card holders can even go. So almost everybody. Uh, just so you know, a fun card is almost the same price as a one-day pass here, so worth the upgrade. So it's noon to four every day right now, and uh, it's definitely worth getting in some rides while there's no wait. I think this this ride will get 
big queue times compared to all the other roller coasters here because of that 48 inch height limit and because it's family friendly. This is a park where the major coasters don't get big lines because a lot of people come here and don't even know about them. So they're coming for other purposes. So I will give you my grade of icebreaker in just a second. In the meantime, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm gonna show you the rest of the land right here. So this has been open for a minute, but I've only been back here once since it opened because, well, there was nothing, but now there's icebreaker. You got Altitude Burgers, which is their new burger place. I've heard of a couple people eating here, and I've heard it's actually pretty good. Um, which SeaWorld tends to have good food. SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, all that. It does look like the signature burger is $19.99 though. One pound of fresh beef, bacon, chili, cheddar cheese, an onion ring, and special sauce with mozzarella sticks. Sounds very shareable, but it is $20 or $15.99 for your basic burger. But at least it comes with a side for that price. Then you come over here to the new bar they opened recently, the Glacier Bar. This was also a bar during Hello Scream. Got some $14 craft cocktails on tap. Sparkling mojito and a spicy pineapple margarita. Also a bunch of beer selection. Got $12 for the beers. And they also have cheeseburgers, mozzarella sticks, and that kind of stuff, as well as uh, what looks like an ice cream sandwich with a stout in it called the Cool Down. That actually sounds pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Yeah, everything's pre-made, though. They do have a regular bar, but it looks like just the basic stuff. And then you don't exit through the gift shop, which is kind of good. And the exit is right by the entrance, which I like. And they've got the gift shop off to the side by the bar, which these are actually some pretty cool shirts, which I'm glad to see SeaWorld doing souvenir shirts because that's not something they do with their coasters at this park. And you're looking at... I guess they're free, they don't have a price. But these over here are $30, so that's probably about what it is. So 15 for Platinum Pass holder, that's not too bad. Got these guys for 15. Got a uh, Pass Member Exclusive pin for $12. Which means $6 for Platinum Pass holder, so that's not bad at all. They even have a long sleeve tee, which I really like that design, but I really don't like long sleeves. That one is quite a bit more at $45, so. Overall, I like the merchandise, which is, yeah, which is different for SeaWorld. Also interesting to note, they have a new freestyle location, which is great because I have 99 cent refills, because I have one of the refill cups not on me, of course, that doesn't help me today, but it's a really nice thing to have. And so here's where Wild Arctic used to be. As of right now, well, they got nothing. I would assume it's eventually going to be something again. Probably not a dark ride because they seem to be heading away from that. You can still access the animal exhibit through the gift shop. So let's check that out too. This is that cookie with the triple chocolate stout. That actually sounds, it looks even better than it sounds. It looks delicious. They also have this more generic store over here where the wild Arctic stuff used to let out. That's also how you enter to the animals right now. Um, this, I did not know about this, but this is apparently where they keep their clearance items. Which are 50% off, which if you're a Platinum Pass holder, you get that anyway, so not a big deal. But just very interesting that it's back here. And I did not know about it. Got a couple stuff, a couple things at full price as well. 
but really not that much. It's kind of just a basic store. It's actually been well over a year since I've been back here. I haven't been here since Wild Arctic was still a thing. So this is a really neat exhibit anyway. It's the Antarctic animals like the beluga whales and the narwhals. So unfortunately no coaster tee for me because they don't have my size. But this coaster I would rate as about a B plus. It's one of the better fillers that I've ever seen and I think it'll get long wait times. I think that SeaWorld did a very good job. I wish they wouldn't have taken so long in opening it, but they did. So now we have it. And February 16th, it seems, or I think it's February 22nd actually is the official opening date where anyone can come ride. And uh, for a park that just raised their prices to $118 for a one day ticket, I feel like they need more stuff like this. And I mean, you just saw they have world-class zoo exhibits. They do have world-class coasters as well. You know, Mako is one of my favorite coasters I've ever been on. You can watch the video on that where I compare Mako to Velocicoaster and which one is my favorite. So, I would rank this coaster number 52. That's out of 205 coaster credits that I have. Number 52. So not quite into that top 50, but it's close. So I have it right under West Coast Racers and Magic Mountain, right above the Flash Vertical Velocity in Vallejo, California at that Six Flags. So overall, solid coaster. Very rewritable. I rode it five times today, front, back, and middle. Definitely a backseat coaster because at the top of that spike you do get a that nice freefall airtime. The ejector is also stronger in the back. The cool thing about the front though is you do get to go almost over the top hat and you get to go, you have more time free falling. I feel like in the front seat though, the airtime you get going backwards is almost a little too much and it kind of hurts your back a little bit. Maybe that's just me being an old man, but uh, I would prefer the back on this one. The middle was kind of lame, like on most coasters. So if you're gonna wait for the coaster, I would definitely wait the extra few minutes for the back train. I didn't feel much difference in the very back versus the middle of the back. The front, you do get some pretty good views of the park though, because it, it's, it's fairly tall. 
nothing like the rest of the park's coasters, but it's 93 feet tall. It goes 50 miles an hour on that third launch. So all in all, pretty good. Um, also, so you have the first part that goes backwards, forwards, and backwards again, and then you go forward. And from the outside, that's really all you see, but then you have this whole back part here too, which is filled with a bunch of ejector airtime, twisted airtime hills, which would be better without the collar that they put on the seats for no reason. I mean, come on, Intamin. Velocicoaster doesn't need a comfort collar, but this does. All right, if you hold the collar towards your body, then your neck doesn't swap on it. It's not as bad as like Tigris where your neck is forced right into the collar. But yeah, so all in all, fun. Definitely a good addition. Not worth a whole trip just to come out here, but if you're coming here anyway, you will want more than what was already here. So I'm off to ride my one of my favorite rides in the entire world, Mako. But for now, this is me signing off. Thanks for watching Corbin's Coasters and More.